in her time, she's the most serious scholar of the dance. And she, the, nobody can compare with her because nobody did what she did. much younger during martial law at her late age she would still be taking uh, classes with us with a guest foreign ballet master and um, she would work as hard as everybody you know and Miss Kina she was of advanced age naturally she didn't jump anymore but yeah she she was in her leotard tights and was on time and stretching so yeah that, that was good for me to see she knew what she was doing. She knew she was stylizing folk dance. She knew she was in a theatrical form and working within theater. So that was a clear break, no? what she did. Uh, it's very clear, her body of work, because this is the folk dance and this is her stylized version of it. So she was quite clear in her head that uh, this was a theatrical um, version of the folk dance. And I think that that's so important. Kasi ano eh, early on, nakita niya na yun eh. So, yung nabuksan niya yung space for innovation talaga. Kasi, um, na, uh, nakita niya na, na na kung magiging artist ka sa ano, dapat huhugot ka. Which I don't hardly like that word these days, hugot. But hug hugotin mo from your own culture. Pero, create so, uh, so in that sense, in opening space for innovation, because ano eh, siguro may mga rigid purists sa folk dance na siguro for them sacrosanct yan hindi hindi ginagalaw kasi galing yan sa folk tradition. Kaya lang yung kay Mam Gokin ko, klaro siya sa ginagawa niya na this is a theatrical version and this is my abstraction of it, this is my interpretation of it. So in a way, you can, you can really see the, the integrity of that intention because um, sometimes there are questions when you put folk dance on stage. Uh, even if there are claims to this is folk dance, this is the authentic, how can it be authentic when it's in, on stage? So she, uh, she recognized that at once and she created for the theatrical stage so it's very clear you know in her body work and and it's a great gift uh, for subsequent choreographers na nabuksan niya yun hindi rin siya natakot and uh, even earlier on dinala niya na agad dun sa path na yun yung Filipinization um, tapos she tackled everything no uh, Lenten rituals no Limetangere Tapos yung tinikling, uh, yung idea ng tinikling na yung babae uh, hinuhuli ng bambu. Parang sa kanila ata yun, hindi ata yun original na ganun. So, um, siguro kung ganun yung original pero talagang yung rendition niya, uh, um, very innovative, very clear. I remember when I was much younger, I saw the Filipinescas on live, live. And, Pero fa ano, fantastic. The, the, it was very parang applause rousing. Pero parang feeling mo hindi siya foreign. Napaka so, importante noon yung space for innovation. Tsaka to have the imagination na gawin yun for, I guess, for the future generation. So, it wasn't confused in her. No? So, okay yun. <laughs> I think great. Okay taught me a whole lot, I learned a whole lot, and that's why I feel equipped to, to write that reviews on drama, theatre, as well as on dance, and on music, well I have good music education. Like chess, life is a game, one entailing the making of a series of crucial decisions and moves, decisive moves, all made within certain time limits. In chess as in life, time is of the essence, 
Yet ideally, one should only make a move when the mind untroubled, clear, and in high gear. While we Filipinos in the home country are asking what is happening to the Philippines and are preoccupied with just trying to face and survive each trying day, many Filipinos in America are deeply engrossed in finding the answers to who am I, where did I come from, where am I going, and what is my place in a free world. When an artist's passion is spent, he is as good as dead. Misdirected or thwarted passion can turn destructive too. Man, woman, husband, wife. Can any other human relationship be more precious, more gratifying, more fulfilling? Or perchance more stultifying, frustrating, maddening? Particularly when fire is in her blood, and ice is in his, when her overwhelming need to have progeny remains endlessly unfulfilled, and when further, she is convinced that it is not she at fault, but he. You know, it's very suave. She never raises her voice. She, that, uh, she has that kind of calmness in her voice. So she would deliver or convey her her displeasure to some people that I know who are my friends. <laughs> but she's never raised her voice. She would be irritated. And you could see she's irritated or she's displeased. But and then she would tell you, but not in in a, in a loud voice or any rising tonality. So but when she was mad, she could be very mad and be very firm about and very hard to forgive too. It's a very hard person to forgive if she doesn't want to forgive. <laughs> uh, I did not know Leonor at all. And then my mother was a seamstress and we were, my mother and I were very close. And then one day she said, you know Leonor also was my classmate in the high school in Negros Occidental, the provincial high school. Since I was interested in dance, I've been reading about people here from the newspapers. So I wrote to her. And during those times, you had to be a pen pal. You had to write letters. It's not like now you can do email, you can even whatever, no? And so I wrote to her. And she responded. And that's why our relationship became more of a friends because we became correspondent. Not regular, but now and then uh, I would write to her and she would answer. And one time she was going to CCP and I was there. She came in into the lobby and she has this letter that she had photocopied. And she said, this is your letter to me. <laughs> so I, I mean, she was so thoughtful in that sense, she remembered our encounter without even having met yet. And one time, uh, I was, uh, since I was provincial, I was going to watch a show in Manila, so I really had to ask her to buy a ticket for me and, and fly here. She bought me a ticket for performance of Margaret Fontaine at the Rizal Theater at the time. So we had had this kind of relationship and when I came to Manila, and I was living near her neighborhood in, by around Morato, or Timo, so I would, we would, we would, I would visit her, I would have, be there for lunch, and then I would be there for dinner. <laughs> we owe, the country owes her a lot for what she did for dance, in her own way, in her, in her, interest in ethnography of dance, because she has her <coughs> first book, her uh, Dance is of Emerald Isles. And therefore, she has done a lot to, to bring in knowledge about dance that other people never really did in their own time for the dance. In her time, she's the most serious scholar of the dance and she, nobody can compare with her because nobody did 
but she did. Well, I was always uh, dissatisfied also with the European ballets because they were always of the foreign sylphs and nymphs and what nots, fairies. So I thought, why not create ballets on Philippine subjects? And that's what I tried to do. <laughs> ¶¶ 